Why, hello everyone! I'm your lovely host, Innocent, and welcome to If One Thing Changed. This game seemed really interesting and had a really deep meaning to it, and it's a bit of a more serious game. So if you are not comfortable right now with viewing something that could contain mentions uh, mentions of depression, suicidal thoughts, suicidal tendencies, all of that kind of weighing topics, I would recommend not being in this video or playing this game for that matter. But this game is the thought of if one thing about your life changed. As you can see, it's a story by this people, and they made it in just a few few days, and it was seems interesting. And we're gonna start. This game has no volume control. Please listen to this chime and adjust your system volume until it's good volume for you. <sighs> okay, clicking to continue. Headphones recommended. Caution: This story contains situations that you may find uncomfortable. The story is completely fictional and is not based on any experiences neither I or anyone I have ever met have had. If you are sensitive to realistic situations, I would not recommend you play this game. There are no images or musics or sounds. Just music and sounds. What? <laughs> okay. This is a text adventure, by the way. Mom and Dad are fighting again. It feels like every day now. And obviously it's about me again. Why does it feel like this is my fault? That I have done everything wrong. It really feels as if it was not long ago. Not long ago that all, all three of us <laughs> were happy. Sweetie, it's dinner time! I love food. Always have. Look forward to all... Look forward to every meal. And snacks and candy. I quickly ran to the table. As I sat down, a plate was set in front of me. Mashed potatoes, peas, and juicy pork chop was placed in front of me. I love mashed potatoes and Dad's famous pork chops. Really, any kind of meat. But his pork chops were my favorite. Peas, on the other hand... I did not really like. I pushed away the plate, leaving only peas spread across the plate. Moving them around doesn't count as eating them. Eat them as well so you will grow up smart and pretty. I push away the plate, with only the peas remaining. Honey, you need to eat those to help you become very smart, a very smart girl. I like peas, so I'm going to eat them. I never liked peas, but they were never that bad. I usually had a fit over them. Hold on, there's an itch in my ear. Holy shit. Ah. Uh, okay, I hate that feeling. Anyway. But I believe my mother when she said it would make me smart. I was such a gullible child. You were a child! That's what children do! But it made my mom smile. I remember school being a different story. I was cute, but also kind of a tomboy. There was this one time. Once at school during recess. Boy, do I miss having those. The time to play and run around when no one would tell you that you had things to do. Hey, come play with us. I was so surprised. I was new to this school and I felt I was already making friends. Which made me happy and, well, eager to please. I was more than willing to follow my new friend. Over to a couple other children at the side of the school. Once I got there, they were gathering small rocks for whatever reason. 
So I joined them and helped gathering rocks. I did not know how it happened, but we changed from collecting rocks to throwing them. Next thing I knew, a window was broken. It wasn't me! Hell, I didn't even throw a, a rock yet! Next thing I heard was... I can't get in trouble, and my mommy will be so mad at me! Please say you did it! You're my new best friend, please! I never had a best friend before. Teacher rushed over to us, almost screaming. Are you kids okay? Who broke this window? Why were you kids throwing rocks? You are in so much trouble. He rattled on so quickly I couldn't follow how angry he was. I had to decide quickly. Oh, fuck. Um. Mm. God, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, well, when I was young, I was very eager to trust, but that was because I was in a lovely Christian school where they shoved that belief down my throat. Nowadays, I, but also at that school, there were, when I was younger, I had a fucked up life. Both of these options, I, I would, uh, it's hard for me to choose which option to choose because even while I was little, both of these standpoints were shoved down my throat. Always trust your fellow brother or sister. Make sure that no harm comes to them, but always tell the truth. <laughs> And I don't know which one to choose, and I would have been in the situation, I, I just would have locked up and have done neither, really. Ugh. Don't, I don't, I don't, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, eeny, meeny, miny, this one. Fuck, I landed in the middle, god damn it. Uh, can I use arrows? I can, okay. I'm close my eyes for I don't see. Pressing spacebar. Telling the truth. Telling the truth. She threw the rock, I said as I pointed to my new friend. As soon as I did, the other kids pointed in agreement that it was her. Last thing I remember was that pain of her screaming. I hate you! I hate you! You're not my friend! Those words echoed in my mind, and it hurts to think that I betrayed a friend. But I was just telling the truth. Why did it hurt so much? Thinking back, I was usually alone. I had very few friends. But I was always trying to outdo what I saw others do. Jungle gyms, monkey bars, swings. Oh, yeah, I love swings. It was where you would find me most of the time at the school or at the park. Oh, lucky your school had swings! Oh, my school didn't even have swings. I remember kids jumping from the swings, from as high as they could, to see how far they would go. And when they were done, I always felt I could do better. One day I did. That day after the kids left. I went over and decided to cop him. But for some reason, it wasn't enough. I got on that swing and went. As hard as I could. As high as I could. I wanted to fly. I closed my eyes and felt the rush. Oh, I could never do that. I never jumped off the swing. Oh, I couldn't. As I flew up and down, back and forth, the wind rushing past me. That is when it came to me. Oh, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Mm -mm, I couldn't do it. I was always afraid I'd break something because my... I have... I have... I have a bone disease. I couldn't do it. I could not do it. <laughs> I felt so free, but then I opened my eyes. Everything was moving so fast I almost lost my grip. As I approached the ground, I slammed my feet down to slow myself. I got caught on something. 
scraping my face, scraping up my face as I tumbled and rolled away from the swing set. I wonder what would have happened if I let go. Probably it would have broke something. Other than your skin. But my parents were freaking out on what just happened. But what I remembered after that was the best ice cream of my life that day. <laughs> wow. I feel like my childhood was awkward. Still, it seemed rather normal, though. My teenage years, on the other hand, were scarier. Once I hit puberty, it wasn't all angst, hatred, and boys. Well, maybe a boy. Maybe a girl. <laughs> My teen years were very... memorable. It brought me far more than I expected when I reached high school. I still was not very social. But somehow I managed to get a boyfriend. Well, it was better than me. Everything went so fast, yet felt slow at the time. Just a blink and it was all gone. But that day, I could never forget. We hadn't dated long when he invited me to a party. He was only a year older than me, so it was not anything special. He was mature. When we arrived, it was different. Not what I remembered a party to be. The air was thick, almost... Almost unbreathable. Everywhere I looked, there were kids of all ages. And I mean, there were kids that looked like middle schoolers. They were all kissing, making out, smoking. I was curious, yet disgusted at the same time. And despite knowing it was bad, I wanted to try it. I wanted to fit in. And my curiosity... No sooner do I think that... And then he came back with a, with booze and I think a cigarette of some kind. He offered both to me. This is just personally me. I don't do any sort of drugs and I waited until I was 21 to drink and even then I still don't like drinking, so no. After I refused, I was too good for all of this. People started talking and started to get o I started to get overwhelmed. I needed to step outside for a bit. After getting some fresh air, I realized that he never came to check on me. Which made me a little upset, so I went to find him. And I did. I should have not done that. He was all over another girl. It was devastating. They were almost half naked. But in the middle of a party? With dozens of people around? How could anyone... He noticed me standing there. Mouth gaping open. And the first thing he said... I just couldn't believe it. I thought she was you! You said you didn't have a girlfriend! I did get some sense of justice when she slapped him. That was it. I walked home, in the cold, by myself, crying. My mother caught me as I entered the door, and we had a long talk. She told me so many things that, I, that made me feel better, about her experiences at my age, but it still made me have trouble every, every, even trusting a guy again. I can't say all my memories were bad but it never seemed to be the good ones I remember. Shopping with what friends I did have was always a blast. Somebody closed the door. My dog is now going to move around. Wonderful. We ate food, got clothes, drooled over cute guys as they walked by. I probably drooled over some cute girls who were showing off way too much clothes, like skin with small clothes. And what? <laughs> it was always good fun. Until we had a few new people join in our small group. We met them one day at the mall. They were way too cool for us. I don't remember how the 
friendship began. But I know how it all ended. The last time I ever enjoyed shopping. It seemed like a distant memory after what happened. Dark chocolate is my favorite. I was spending all I had for my stash at home. I was running low. After I gathered my hoard, I turned to our new friends and saw them. Sticking stuff into their pockets? They were signaling for me to come over. I didn't know why they were, but I had an idea. Hey, grab a couple of these. My pockets are full. Mine too. Hurry up. And don't worry, we do this all the time. I know this is wrong, but it sounded exciting. Something to brag about. A story to tell, even if it was small. It does look tasty. You don't fucking steal! Stealing is bad and wrong. You don't fucking steal, even if all your friends are doing it. You ain't gonna jump off a fucking bridge while your friends are doing it. Bitch, nah. Maybe it's just because I'm a quote-unquote goody two-shoes, but no. The next thing I know, a couple of mall cops come up behind us. We are then ex escorted to some room in the mall. After they lecture us and made a few phone calls, we waited for our parents. I just couldn't believe that this was happening. My parents still bring it up even now. It's just not fair. I was banned from the mall for life. The biggest turning point in high school years was not even about high school. It was about driving. I still don't drive. I always wanted to drive. No, I don't. To have the freedom, the, the speed, the ability to get away. Even after my license, I was never allowed to use the car. Or so it seemed. I got my chance when I at least expected it. A drive-in movie. No, Dane. Just me. The fresh air. And movie food. It was just a night I had no one to watch over me. The movie was a double feature of movies that have been in theaters for a while. So it was going to be a long night and I was going to love every minute. My bladder didn't agree, though. I don't want to miss a part of the movie. But I really need to go. And the movie is just getting good. I was beginning to regret buy buying the jumbo soda. Yeah, fuck it, hold it. In order not to miss anything, I choose to hold it in. Probably the worst choice I have made. Bathroom related, anyway. Not even 20 minutes later, I explode and it wouldn't stop. Even though no one could see me, I was so embarrassed. You know what? I've actually never had that happen to me. I guess my school trained me well for holding in my bladder and anything relating for the bathroom. Yep. I went to the restroom and cleaned myself up. Brought back as many towels as I could. I tried to clean up it as fast as I could. Though the smell stayed. I finished watching the movies. Yes, I stayed. Not only to see what I paid for, because I couldn't pay any attention to the movies. How was I going to explain this when I got home? car had to be professionally clean to get rid of the smell. But my dad wasn't mad when I told him. He was actually laughing? And he said, and I quote, I did the same thing once. At least you weren't on a date. I can't even scratch the surface of my experiences. But some of the biggest things happened fuck. <laughs> After high school, I was forced, well, not forced, I was suggested to get a job. Parents are such a pain. Well, it wasn't a bad idea, since I wanted stuff. That requires money. Though it took me weeks in what felt like hundreds of applications. I would work anywhere at this point. Can't, I can't work at the mall and been there for life. Finally, the time came. Just as a waitress, but who am I to complain? It was harder than I thought it would be. But I was pretty. According to all the customers. Which got me tips. 
really good tips. Okay. I was making more than I ever thought I would. Because, but as the weeks went by, it seemed like my checks were getting smaller. I tried to bring it up to the owner, my boss, and he just kept brushing me off, saying that I'm getting paid for what I work. I told my parents. They told me to keep track of my own time. I wanted to trust my boss, but I kept track anyway. The next check was even lower than before, and my records show that I should have been paid more. A lot more. And I brought it to the attention of the boss when I was off. And he responded with all these wild excuses. I tried to fight him on it, demanding my money. You're, a, you're replaceable. Complaining against... Complain again and you're fired. He walked out of the office for a break. Which he did 40 times a day. I noticed something after he left. The safe is open. The bunch of cash. I work hard. I wanted what I earned. I was going to take it. Then find another job. uh, God, no, you don't. No, you don't do that. You fucking take him to corporate level. You're not. If you have your time checks written down and you have a contract with them. No, god damn it. No. Just take what you're owed, I guess. That's the lesser of all of those. You're still gonna get in fucking trouble because you're stealing. <sighs> I didn't want to steal. Thank you. But I wanted what was mine. Left my a- apron and told everyone there I quit. It was enough to get me by. At least while I found a different job. Which eventually did with, with a far better pay. And a great boss. I feel a bit bad. But I don't regret what I did. Were there, like, no fucking cameras in that office with the fucking safe? You would have been caught red-handed! What the fuck? But I'll... Uh, maybe they're just keeping it secret because they don't want... They're, they're both in the wrong, so maybe they're just like, fuck it. I, I don't know. Anyway, with all the things in my life... I remember the scariest moment of my life. Met a guy, and he asked me out. What a beautiful night. And such a great date. He was charming, romantic, caring. Everything you would hope for. At the end of the date, he offered me a ride home. I declined. I wanted to walk home on such a great night. But shortly into my walk, things changed. I saw something in the distance near an alley. A kid who was waving his arms at this homeless man? I decided to go do a little investig- Mm. To what was going on. Though as I got closer, I saw he had a gun. He was waving a gun around at the man. Is it real? Wait. Is he robbing that guy? Densomai, of course he was! I didn't call the cops. I stayed back and silently called the police. I tried to make sure I was hidden. I wanted to be as far away. But I wanted to leave. But I barely could dial a phone. Let alone run. While on the phone with the police, I watched as the poor guy cowered in fear, but still refused to give what little he had. This seemed to piss the kid off even more. Suddenly, the homeless man jumped at his attacker. My heart stopped, watching the homeless man body, man's body fall to the floor. His shooter rummaged through his body, then ran off. I dropped my phone with 911 on the line, ran to him as fast as I could. There was no point. Lifeless. Motionless. He was dead. Could I have done something? As everyone was running around, I couldn't keep track of anything. I just stood there motionless as the sirens and lights surrounded me. 
I was questioned for a while about the description of the shooter, but only to find out that my memory couldn't recall anything but a vague description. While that was crossing my mind, that image was burned into me. It took me weeks to recover, and I still haven't gotten over it. My parents described me as completely inconsolable. I felt like I could have saved him. I can't escape how much trouble I feel like I've caused everyone. Mostly my parents. Being an adult has never made me want to be a kid again. Every day you wish you could just be carefree and irresponsible again. That's it. Screw being an adult. I went to get drunk. I mean everyone. I did not care what gender. One guy offered to buy me a drink. I was not going to pass that up. Which was unknowingly one of the worst decisions of my life. Something was wrong. I was not okay after that drink. Everything was starting to feel weird. I think I was drugged. The night just got worse from there. He got me into a cab, headed somewhere. I was not in control of myself. I wanted everything, but wanted to get away from at the same time. My brain made me relive all of my bad experiences. All at once, and I was shutting down. And being drugged didn't make it any better. Next thing I could recall is that he was touching me. It all changed. Wished I was good and did everything right. Couldn't move. Couldn't scream. Couldn't fight back. This is all my fault. Somebody saved me. The cab driver. Barely after we started moving, he slammed on the brakes. Looked back as I and asked me if I was okay. I could barely shake my head. Apparently it was enough. The cab driver buff busted out of his door and ripped the guy out of the back. Punched him out cold in one shot. This cab driver. I have no idea what he looked like. It didn't matter. You saved me from a horrible experience. Before I passed out, he managed to find out where I wanted to go. With the barely audible voice I had. Parents. He took out my phone and called my parents. I couldn't stop him even if I wanted to. My parents gave him their address and dropped me off. My parents helped me inside and took me to my old room. I haven't been here in so long. It almost looks unchanged. I felt safe. And I fell asleep. My mother woke me in the afternoon. I started to cry about what had almost happened. She mother talked to me for the rest of the day. Later that night, my dad brought me one of his famous pork chops. And it was the best fucking pork chop. Ever. I love my parents. They have taken such good care of me. Through everything. I can never thank them enough. Enough. But... That is when it all happened. When everything changed. It was... It had to have been years now. It's hard to keep counting like this. Just a normal day coming home from work. Nothing special. I live close enough to walk home every day. Only a few blocks, occasionally picking up coffee. Waiting. The sign changes to walk. I start crossing. About halfway into the street, Since the accident, I have been in a coma. But I can hear everything. Every word the doctors have said. Every single thing my parents fought about. I wish I could tell them one last time. 
I'm so sorry for what I put them through. I hear my parents yelling at the doctors, saying they aren't doing enough to save me. They have been moving me from different hospitals, seeing the best doctors they can get, spending every penny they have. I hear them talk about how good I've been, that they were able to save and invest and become well off, and they will spend everything, give up everything, just to bring me back. My mother crying at my bedside, and I can't do anything to comfort her. Recently, they have been moving me back and forth. From one place to another, room to room, hospital to hospital, injecting me with stuff. It really hurts. They think I can't hear or feel. I wish they were right. I hear it all. I feel it all. My parents. They love me so much, doing everything they can, trying everything possible, but I think I... Call the parents! Is there a problem, doctor? Call the parents now! She's waking up! That's my little one. And that my little one is what happened to mommy. I feel I didn't... I feel I did even one thing different. I feel if, if I did even one thing different back then, I might not be here now. You might not even be here now. And why every day I tell you that I love you. Just in case. sad. I'm crying. <laughs> oh, that was sad. Oh, that was your niece. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm wiping my face because I'm crying. <sighs> that was an amazing story. Holy fuck! What an emotionally driven story that was well executed. There were some grammatical errors here and there, but the story got across very well. And holy fuck! Oh, I haven't had a game hit me that hard in such a long time. Oh my god. <sighs> thank you for playing. No, thank you for making such a great game and story. Really, this was amazing. <sighs> I hope that all of you have enjoyed this. I know it's a bit long, but... I could not break up this story. I could not, even if I tried. I, it, it needs to be taken in at all at, at once. Oh my god. Oh. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted on how well that hit and crushed my heart in the best way. Ugh. Ugh. Okay, I'm going to end this here. This has been If One Thing Changed... Great fucking story, if I tell you that. Thank you all for watching. I hope you had a wonderful time, and I hope to see you all again so very soon. Peace out. Bye-bye.